you say sometimes you're not phone goes that way is still recording and don't just yes sir uh, don't say nothing to you. No, it should be part of that. It's, uh, social media has those glitches that it should be part of that. Welcome to Did You Know Podcast, your host, Richard Langford, dedicated to the African American viewers. The program is aimed to celebrate African American culture and deal with the real and relevant topics that impact the everyday lives of the African American community. It's frightening and insightful values for local and national influencers. Every day, there's a new horrible, discouraging news story, directly or indirectly, impacting African Americans. But we need to look at the shining stars in the galaxy of life. Hello, 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 and welcome to another Did You Know? Well, I got a couple good things to tell you. One, I've been doing this for almost two years now. I had a dream and a vision that I wanted to do this podcast, and I've been fortunate and blessed that I've been able to do it. And I'm stepping up a little bit now because I'm even going to create a YouTube channel. But what I think is the most important thing, I've been troubled these last few days. And I've been troubled because I realized something. We in our community have a void. And when I say we have a void, who defines us? Who talks about us? Who tell our stories? I get very annoyed because I see other people talk about us and tell our stories, but they don't tell the positive stories about us sometimes. And so I made up my mind that I'm gonna do everything that I can to tell our stories. But I think you out there need to learn to tell our stories as well. So if that means that we need to create our own radio stations, so be it. If that means we need to create our own TV stations, so be it. If that means that we need to create our own magazines, so be it. If that means that we need to create our own podcast, so be it. Because we keep waiting on somebody to tell our stories and they're not good. An incident happened the other day that troubled me. There was a group that came from Pittsburgh, a football team, Westinghouse, came up to Stilton, which is outside of Harrisburg. And they played in the football game. But the point is not the football game. This is the point. After the game, Westinghouse might have won. That's not the point. But the TV stations in Pittsburgh never acknowledged that Homewood, Westinghouse is in Homewood, won the game. Only thing they ever talk about in Homewood is about killings, shootings, and murder. Nothing positive. And I was troubled by that. Get positive news about us. And why did it bother me? Because I'm from that neighborhood. And it's a very tough neighborhood. It's a very rough neighborhood. But sometimes you need to tell positive things about the community. And I sat there and I went, Every time I hear anything about Homewood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is always negative. So who's going to tell our stories? Who's going to say the wonderful thing, things about us? The only people I know is us. So I'm telling all of you out there, and I've said this a hundred times and I will keep saying it. If you keep waiting on some horse to ride through the neighborhood to uplift us, then shame on us. We got to step up and do things for ourselves. And so that's why I'm happy that I'm able to have this podcast. And I hope a lot of other people have podcasts. I hope others out there to do magazines. 
how well the people these newspapers. But it's one thing to say to do them. The other thing is you out there got to support them as well. That's why I'm troubled. Because who tells our stories? Every time we look at the news, it's negative. Not to say it ain't right. Shootings and killings is too much. I agree. But we got some wonderful people out there. We got some wonderful young people that are doing some wonderful things. And we need to promote them to let them know they're just important and they should be proud of themselves and we should be proud of them. You know, the other thing I wanna bring up, this whole thing about history. And all of a sudden, we don't wanna talk about history or we wanna tell certain parts about history. And as I've said to you before, my program is, did you know? And one of the most important things I want to do, I want to plant seeds in your mind. I'm not trying to form you to think one way or the other. So just think about some things I'm going to say this evening before I get into politics. Um, history is the best teacher because we use the experiences of the past as a present day educational tool. However, in order to receive the best, most effective lessons, we must honor the truth of our past. That means acknowledging and accepting the good and the bad of yesteryear. Too often history has been rewritten to conceal the horrors of yesterday, serving the very ugly realities of this country's past and present. We open up the eyes of the American people. What do I mean by that? Let's deal with the past. Let's deal with the present. We can't whitewash the past because you have to kind of know who you are. And if we don't know who we are, then shame on us. Most people can identify who they are and where they came from. And I would admit to you some of the history that I knew about us, I wasn't happy with. And sometimes I probably step back. Did I have forefathers that were slaves? Absolutely. Did I have family members that were sharecroppers? Absolutely. And then at some point in my life, I didn't want to acknowledge them? Probably, and many of you did as well. We need to acknowledge them. Because why? Because they were tough and they were survivors. I look back at it as I was growing up and people said, oh, you were African. And I probably said I was an Indian because we made it feel better. We have to take responsibility to who we are and what we're about because we are a strong people. And we need to tell our young people that we are strong people. And sometimes I talk to people and they say, oh, that was in the past. If you don't know where you came from, how do you know where you're going? It's something I want you to think about. The other thing I'm gonna leave you with, most people haven't the slightest idea who they are and what they are. When questions about their true identity or who they are, they're confused because they don't know who they are. Some of us sooner and later will search for true identity, which I did. I have a, a person I think very highly of that did all the searching of who I was, good, bad, and different. Some of it brought tears to my eyes, but it helped me understand who I am. And why do I think that's important? And why you, I think you should think it's important? Because we're labeled. There's always about labels about us. Race, gender, age, whether you could now have a senior citizen, uh, disabled, there's labels about us. But don't let labels define who we are. But if you told me that a mind within a body is a spiritual being, that's important because I think we need to have that, understand who we are, because there's been so much negativity about who we are. 
I heard it growing up, you heard it growing up, and sometimes we articulate that to our kids. And we need to be very positive because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a fight for our life. And I guess I'll leave with this African proverb states, if you don't know who you are, anyone can name you. And if anyone can name you, you will answer to anything. I'm going to leave you with that tonight because I think it's very important. So with that, where are we going tonight? Well, politics is where we are. And uh, most of you, politics is the most important thing right now. And I brought a good friend on. Him and I have been good friends a long time. And I'm political and he's political. But I brought him on because I think it's important for us, us, to give a black or African-American people of color or other organizations or ethnic groups a perspective. And so that's why I brought him on. Tony, please tell the audience who you are. Most of them know who you are, but I want them to know that when I bring you on, we just as good as meet the press. We just as good as anybody else because we work there. We worked in the halls of government. I've worked for U.S. senators. You work for U.S. senators. I ran presidential campaigns, worked on presidential campaigns, and you worked on campaigns. So we know what we're talking about, but I want people to know that we can talk about what we're talking about because we know what we're talking about. So please tell them who you are. Sure. Good evening to the audience. My name is Tony Ross. I'm a former staff person in the Pennsylvania State House. I've worked in uh, campaigns, as Richard just alluded to. I've also worked in nonprofits at statewide in Philadelphia and nationally. And I work for right now for campaigns in Pennsylvania and uh, Philadelphia. So I bring that perspective to this debate today. Not a debate, but to a discussion. Okay, we're going to talk about a number of things today. Because I call this, let's get ready to rumble, November 8th, 2022. And I'm going to stay on it up to November 8th, 2022. Why? Because I believe... That's what I'm about. I believe that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be able to help us be informed, but I want us to be fighters all the way down. So I'm going to bring up some things to you, Tony, and let's talk about it. But I want sure. to put it in perspective to the audience. Our vote has been our weapon since the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard me. I said 1965. I didn't say 1810. I said 1965, and it hasn't been that long ago. The Voting Rights Act. Now, keep in mind, the Voting Rights Act was able to allow us to vote because prior to that, they came up with all kinds of foolishness. Yes. They came up in terms of how we can vote, where we can't vote. Even though we have the vote of 1965, even though we're in 2022, I see some of the similarities of taking place. Voter ID, redistricting, saying that the votes don't count, they've been rigged up. So what do you think we as a group should look at in terms of where we are in 2022? I think number one, we have to stay vigilant about voting rights as you alluded to, Richard. I think, you know, uh, one of the most effective uh, campaigns I've seen or commercial that I saw heard was saying, if, if, our co if our folks didn't matter, why do people work so hard to try to take them away from us? So I think number one, we gotta stay vigilant. Number two, we gotta use our vote. I mean, we can't be fall susceptible to certain messages about voting and saying it doesn't matter, you know, or doesn't matter who a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, because it, the reality is it does matter. So I think that's the other thing that we need to do as well. Um, so that's what I think at, at this point. Okay, you say voting matters, and I've run into people to tell me my vote don't count. It don't make no difference. They're going to do anything they want to do. But I'm going to go a little deeper tonight. And I'm going to go deeper in terms of, ladies and gentlemen, 
you got to look out for your own interests. And let me put it in perspective for you. Most politicians reward those that they, they can count on. Let me give you a couple examples. Just saying, once you think about it, all of a sudden now, we send a lot of money to Israel. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. We send a lot of money to Ukraine. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. We even send money to Taiwan. We send money all over. Why? Because there's groups out there that have vested interest to make sure that that money goes to where they want that vested interest to go. But, but, let's talk about Mississippi and the water problem. Now, yes. you mean to tell me you can send all that money way over there and the people in Mississippi is drinking crappy water and have been drinking crappy water for a long time. I'm not and even going to go to Flint, Flint, Michigan. is still, still hurting on that as well. Flint, Michigan as well. I'm not going to go to uh, Flint, Michigan. We could talk about it. So you mean to tell me you can't fix the water system in Flint, Michigan? You can't fix the water system in Mississippi, and you got all this money you've been sending everywhere. Why? Because we're not considered political enough. That's why I keep telling you we got to punish those who ain't about us and reward those that are for us. So, therefore, you don't think who's in Congress counts? <laughs> you don't think who's your senator, who the state, the 50 senators, or you don't think who's in Congress makes a difference? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it makes a difference. And so I'm telling you tonight, starting tonight, I'm taking the gloves off. You ought to take the gloves off and we ought to start fighting for what we believe in. Because if we don't fight for ourselves, then shame on us. And I'm tired of everybody sitting on the sidelines saying, whoa me, whoa me, whoa me. I'm telling you, that's why Mississippi gets treated that way. And that's why Flint, Michigan did. I know why things get treated in Pennsylvania, whatever, because why I work for politicians. They're looking to see who, where they're going to get their votes from. They're right. going to reward those who reward them. That's Go right. Ahead, well, I think the other thing that we got to remember as well, uh, every vote counts. And I'm going to tell you how. For example, in Florida, there was a congressional race where a person who was 25 years old, a young man, won. And I didn't win by that much either, but he won. And so that, you can best believe, that's going to make a difference for people in Florida about those issues because he wrote it, he wrote he defeated uh, much more senior uh, people in the primary, and now he's going to run in the general election. Here in Pennsylvania, we have an interesting race right here up up here in Pennsylvania in uh, Harrisburg with uh, Shemaine Daniels, who is running against Scott Perry. One or two votes might make the difference there. So it's very important that you know, Richard, as you just said, that every vote does matter. But I'm going to carry a little further tonight. I told him taking the gloves off. Yeah, I keep saying we must keep voting. But, whoa, folks, we got to get people to run for office. That's right. We have to get people to run for office. So I'm telling you out there now, let's find candidates to run for the next primary. That's right, next primary. That's what they're doing. That's what we got to start to do. See, we got to start changing the playbook. So those of you walking around saying, oh, I'm thinking about running for mayor. Oh, I'm thinking about running for judge. Oh, I'm thinking about running for sheriff. It's time now to start putting those things in motion. But oh, wait, time, saying that, at the same time of saying that, we got to run some good, you know, good, good, competent candidates. And we got them out there. We got some really good candidates. But we got to run for, you can't keep sitting on the sideline. You know, the other day I had breakfast with a group of guys. And one guy said, well, you know, we can't change anything. Oh, it's all going to be the same. And I said, you really believe that? Oh, yeah, everything going to be the same. Or if I get in there, I'll just make it the same as the same as what it was. So what does that do? So you're saying that you're going to let the system continue to perpetuate. Right. My thing is, 
you know, we'll change it. We mm -hmm. want, we going to run. You don't like the mayor, then you run for mayor, find somebody to run. That's for right. Mayor. Now we talk about the criminal justice system and we've been talking about it. So now you don't like the judge. Well, if you don't like the judges, then you run for judge. Yes, if you don't right. like the district attorney, then you run for the district attorney. If you don't like police men, police women, firemen, whatever, then you become it. You don't, you say, I get tired of hearing people say, well, you know, the education system don't, can, don't teach our kids. Well, then you become a teacher. That's we right. have to start taking responsibility of who we are and where we want to go. And history has told us, history has told us if we don't do it, where are we going to be? Let's not fall with this washing of history and we don't want to talk about the past because the past was the past. You got to kind of know what the past is to have some foundation. I mean, I call it as I see it. Uh, do, do Jewish people talk about the Holocaust? Because they don't want you to forget about the Holocaust because it was a tragedy. And they don't want people to see the kind of suffering and things happen under a percent. So they want you to remember it. Yep. And as thing. you know, Richard, the number one uh, responsibility of any, any party or any other person is candidate recruitment. And anybody can recruit a candidate to run for office, any office, a dog catcher, as little as low as that. And you can find people that you can find and they can run for office, like your church, uh, sports leagues, uh, education. You know, you can get on a candidate anywhere. So I think that's an important part that we can do. We can find oh, no, people I, all sorts of places. I, and I agree with you. And I, I think that's what we have to do. I think that the negative has always been politicians are crooks. Politicians only care about themselves. I think we have to change. I'm not saying that has not been true, but we now have to change the, the, the mindset of that for it to be our interest. Everything now has to be about our interest. And, uh, and the other thing I would say, and Richard, you alluded to this a little bit in your previous comments. We have to understand that with, with any candidate, we're not going to always agree with, one, with them 100% of the time. So if you recruit someone and maybe you agree with the person 80%, 90% of the time, you need to get behind that person. So I think that's another thing. You're trying to find somebody who's, who uh, is 100% in, in line with me or any other person. It's not really realistic to look forward to that. And I think we, it's a big problem in our community right now. I, I'm not going to get hung up at this point, Democrat, Republican, Independent, uh, Green Party or whatever. I think I'm more honed on our self-interest. That's, That's right. Important thing, our self-interest. And I, I, I think that is very important. But as I will continue to say, people only support you if they think they're going to support them. It's about a right. different, good, bad, or indifferent. So if you go down to City Hall or wherever you go and you ask somebody to do you a favor, the first thing they did, they look who voted for them and they're going to reward those who voted for them. And I say it's a, it's a fair system, not necessarily, but I will also put in perspective that think about what we went through to vote. We need right. to think about the legacy of all those people who died because they thought voting was very important. You know, we talk about history, and that's why I think it's very important when we talk about some of our forefathers had to go through poll tax. We don't yes. want to talk about it, but they had to go through poll tax. Or yeah. they had to go through, guess how many beans is in yeah. the door. You don't think about it. You don't think about those things because they're not connected to you now, but it's a legacy that what went on and that's why it's very important for we to look out for sales. And you know, I, 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 I look at it and I think people forget sometimes what's very important. You know, I was looking at some statistics the other day and I just happened to glance at the 2020 presidential, it was the highest turnout in recent history. Now, 
80 million people voted for Joe Biden and 74 million voted for Donald Trump. That ain't what bothered me. What bothered me was there were 80 million who were eligible to vote by age or citizenship who didn't care. Mm. They didn't care. Some of them out there, for you that I'm talking to, and I got friends and relatives and cousins and everybody else that didn't vote. So if we don't vote, don't get upset and get mad when things don't go the way that you that you want them to go. I think this is a very critical race. Race is coming up. The midterms as well as the president. And I say, people say, why? Those of you who understand Roe v. Wade, you understand it now. Those of you who realize that the court is very conservative, you realize why now. Uh, you know, you look at the whole judicial thing. Just think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Most of us, we've always have questioned the judicial system, but um, people always told us that we weren't law and order and everybody else was law and order. So now I, I kind of smirk at or laugh at when I hear people like Donald Trump who says, well, if I get reelected, all those people that were uh, tried for the, 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 the January issue, I'll pardon them. I go, what? Or I now want everybody, if I get elected, I'm going to send everybody that does drugs to send them to prison for life. Well, but you pardon some. You see, right. it's a devil standard. And ladies and gentlemen, my whole point tonight is politics is politics. It's a devil standard, and we're going to have to get down and dirty to get what we want. Let's take off the gloves. Let's rumble. Let's call it as we see it. Because if we don't, we're in trouble. Because nobody's well, going to look out for us anymore. Well, Richard, as you, still, Go ahead. Hmm? well as you said so articulately, take, for example, Roe v. Wade and the, uh, and the, the effect that it's had on women voters. You know, you look at the, the court, as you mentioned, uh, came down with the Roe v. Wade, uh, uh, turning it down. And now women are coming out in droves and voting. You look at Kansas, a, a typically a Republican conservative state. They wrote, they overwhelmingly voted for uh, Roe v. Wade. Look at the re recent uh, New York congressional race. So... You know, again, that's where people are mo motivated by things that they think affect their affect their their lives, and that's a vote. That's a vote that they really feel affects their lives. What do you think about this whole this whole campaign thing? And when I talk about campaigns, and I'm talking about campaign in general, um, you know, one of the things they've always attempted to do, and especially in minority communities black and brown, they've always made everything so negative. So negative that even we didn't want to go out ourselves, even though we had interest that we should have gone out. So right. what do you think about how they target us? And we haven't figured it out how to counter their shenanigans. Well, I think you make a very good point that, you know, it's you can't win just well, always going negative. So 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 and so is bad. Well, that's that's fine. It may be bad. But what's what's good about you is the real question. And I think, uh, you know, they're trying to do some things about the new um, the new law that which Biden uh, signed You're saying to people, what do you get from this law that you like or what are you going to get from the new uh, debt reduction, that's the student debt reduction. So, but I think you're right, Richard. We, we've got to ha have a message that is uh, one negative, but also positive as well. Um, I will also say you politicians out there, your organizations out there, you're going to have to start giving us some respect and mm -hmm. stop taking us for granted. I'm tired of you thinking that we're just supposed to go to the polls and we're supposed to vote the way you tell us, but you give us nothing. I mean, you give us nothing at all. You give us no intention. You don't want to make sure that you have 
campaign material that reflect what we might be interested in, maybe even reading it as interesting so that we can see what you are about. So I'm telling all you, I'm putting you on notice. So let's stop saying vote for me, vote for me, but don't tell us why we should vote for you. Because <laughs> I'm back, I told you, I'm taking the gloves off. If you support us and you have our agenda and you have our back, then naturally we should have your back. Yes. But if you just assume that we're just going to be with you, don't get mad. I'm tired of hearing it. Oh, the voter turnout was very low in the minority community. They didn't come out. Did you try to get them out? No. Yeah. Did you work yeah, to yeah. get them out? Did you, did you, did you drive? Did you do uh, get out the vote? Did you do uh, campaigning? Did, did you have staff? Did you have staff? Staff? Where, where's the staff that look like us? Uh, did you, uh, not only that, did you advertise in magazines or radio or wherever that we serve each other? Do you do that? If you don't reach out to us, then stop asking us to support you. I'm telling all then, of you. And then, and then don't blame us if we don't come out to vote. No, they blame us all the time. They blame us all the time because that's something that they want to do. Um. Well, I'm going to move on now because I'm going to get to, well, oh, we're going to Pennsylvania now. Uh oh. That's, we're going to go to Pennsylvania. And I think it's very, I think it's very important. Uh, but before I go to Pennsylvania, I want to leave everybody with this. Don't forget now, folks. People that supported Donald Trump believe he won the election. There's those people who believe that Biden didn't win the election. But we know that Biden won the election. But I'm gonna give you a little shot of credit tonight because they think that a lot of it was stolen and remarkable it was stolen in minority communities. So they usually don't give us credit. But <laughs> if you believe that we're that bright and we're that sophisticated, then start respecting us. Well, you look at the states that he went, that he caught, that he challenged to the elections. They're all states with minority communities in Milwaukee, uh, Philadelphia, Atlanta. So, yeah, definitely, Richard, you make a very good point. All right, we're going to go now to Pennsylvania. Huh. Well, we'll go with the Senate first, and then we'll go to the gubernatorial. So, you got two people. You got Dr. Oz, the medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. You got the Lieutenant Governor Fetterman. Now, we better figure out where we are in this election and what's important to us as the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Republicans at this point supposedly have some enthusiasm. Uh, they say that a lot of people is angry at Joe Biden because uh, the way the economy is going. But at the same time, we got some other issues out there. Roe v. Wade, drug prices, climate change, and law and order. But before I ask you to, to, to speak on that, I want to point out a couple of things. Ladies, if you don't vote your best interest, stop crying. Because you got a chance to show reward and punishment. Drug prices, stop complaining out there if we don't vote, if you can't afford your prescriptions. Climate change as well. What's remarkable to me is you had all those Republicans voted it all down. But yet, their constituents are beneficial of it. And that we need to tell that story. That's right. They said, no, 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 no. And all of a sudden now, I see some senators, representatives, they're changing their kind of story on Roe v. Wade. Well, I mean this, but I, no, you voted it, no. Yeah. Drug prices. All these people who served in the military and they wanted all this other stuff. And you want the VA to do this, and they voted it now. Voted it down. 
Remember that. Now, law and order, and I'm going to move on. Law and order has been remarkable to me. All my life, I've always had a question about the judicial system, fair and what's not fair. And then when the Black Lives Matter, everybody hijacked Black Lives Matter and said, oh, we wanted to fund the police. And I don't know anybody who wanted to fund the police. I lived in the neighborhood. I ain't never heard nobody say they didn't want no police in the neighborhood. But that's how they, <laughs> that's how they projected it to everybody. And we fell for the hokey dope. Whoop! But now they don't like the way that FBI or Department of Justice is doing things. So now they want to hijack that word defund. The Republicans have always said they're law and order. I don't know why they ever thought Democrats wasn't law and order. I've been surprised by that all my life because I've always been a law and order person. But that's how the, we, early on I talked about history, label. So now they wanted to fund it. So all law and order, all this group, law and order. You got Jesse, I mean, you have all these people. Talk about riding. Talk about if, 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 if we don't do this. Search once we've been known to. Black folks, they've been going, people of color, they've been going in your houses on search warrants and was not out with search warrants. They've been busting in your houses. But it was okay. So this right. group is a legitimate search warrant, but it ain't okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we all are citizens of the United States. There's nobody above the law. Nobody is supposed to be above the law. So those of you who run around here, I want you all to go in your bathroom or wherever, look in the mirror and say, am I above the law? Um, can ask yourself that. Because one of the problems is, is we have not become sensitive to look at life the way we should look at life in terms of how we want to be treated. You see, what happens is, and I'm very bothered by it, we don't care about it if it don't affect us. And right. once it affects us, we care about it. So what do you what do you think about all this, Tony? Well, I think it's interesting. Some of the issues that you raise, I would also raise gun control um, or gun ownership, and that how that has played out as well. You know, when uh, when we become gun owners and the right to bear arms, that's not so well received. For example, but uh, when other people do it, that's okay. So you're you're right. There's a double standard that is, exists when it comes to these issues. Um, we look at this campaign at the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania, and I'm gonna put it in perspective tonight to my audience. You know, way way back there was campaign that was ran in Pennsylvania for judge. It was called Willie Horton. And they ran all this negative this about some uh, black person that had murdered somebody, had gotten out of jail and murdered somebody else. So every time there's a campaign, they always run the negatives about Willie Horton. They always try to imply that the Republicans are law and order and that the Democrats are not law and order. And they always bring a person of color up that they question the integrity of the judgment or the decision that was made. Now, why am I bringing that up now? It's 2022 and Dr. Oz decided to run a commercial and he's been running a commercial because I've seen it with my own eyes about Lee and Dennis Horton. These are two guys that gave a friend a ride in Philadelphia. Unbeknownst to them, they say, they did not know that the person that they picked up as a friend had shot somebody in Philadelphia. They did not know where that. Want you keep in mind, I'm a, I'm a, I have a point here. So they had a trial and they said they were innocent and they rejected a plea deal. 
And they end up staying 27 years in prison. And the sentence was commuted in February of 2021. But they've been running this ad about all saying that he hired that he hired two criminals to work on his campaign. But I'm going to carry it a little different. My audience, how many of us? And let's be real. That could have been us where we could have picked up somebody that we knew was a friend that was riding up the street. I'm just asking. I want you to think about it, all of us, because that could have been us. Yes or no? How many of us have friends that did a lot of crazy things? We didn't know they did a lot of crazy things, mm-hmm. but they were our friends and we were riding up the street and they was maybe hitchhiking or whatever. Hey, you're going to the street? We said, yeah, you put them in the car, you're old. And you did not know they had done something because that is the way our community has always been. That's why I always say it's important for us to get district justices and judges to understand us and why it's important for us to run our own judges and things because they understand. Because if you're a judge or a district justice and somebody goes in front of you that's people of, people of color and they say, well, I stay at my grandmom's this week and I stay at my aunt's that week. That's a very natural thing in our community. But if somebody else looked at it and say, oh, if you ain't staying at one person's house, then you're not staying at a stable house. So it's very common that your friend going up the street and pick them up. Now keep this in mind. They did 27 years. They pleaded innocent and they rejected the plea bargain. They could have got out before this, but they said right is right. But they're going with this dirty campaigns of Willie Horton, and they're going to be some negative campaigning from now to November 8th, and we need to be up on it. Now, even though this has come out, do you think Dr. Oz or whatever come back and say, well, I made a mistake? No, because they planted the seed and they always plant seeds about us being very negative. And I'm telling everybody, we better start fighting back. What do you think, Tony? Oh, I think that's right. I mean, we have to tell the truth. And um, I think you make a good point about that. I mean... And it's been amazing, as you say, Richard, to watch the uh, incredibly negative turn that uh, the campaign has taken, in particular with uh, Dr. Oz. And and what I always tell people, uh, you know, when somebody's losing this, they go negative. And uh, at least what I've seen is basically a lot of negative ads have come from Dr. Oz. Now, there's now uh, there's some response by Fetterman. But, you know, by, 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 by and large, it's Dr. Oz who has started it. And you say, why? And it's because he's losing, because he doesn't really uh, connect with Pennsylvanians, you know. You know, you hear these uh, stories about him owning houses in three states in a foreign country. He's not from Pennsylvania. That, that's been the Fetterman uh, sort of approach. And so he's trying to now throw out the, the traditional Republican uh, campaigns of uh, Willie Horton, Willie Horton, like ads to try to bring down Fetterman. So it's, it's unfortunate. Too bad we can't have much more of a, a substantive campaign. But you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to. But that's our job to, not uh, me and you per se, Richard, but all of us as, uh, as Pennsylvanians to demand our candidates uh, address the issues that are important to our our people. My issue is I'm tired of campaigns painting a picture of us. I'm tired of them running the Willie Horton campaigns because they think that little suburban lady or man or whatever is going to be scared. So I'm not going to vote. That's not right. And that's not fair. And we better start fighting back. That's my whole point here. There is no Willie Horton on this. I'm tired of people thinking, do people of color have criminals? Absolutely. But every ethnic group I know have criminals, but we don't highlight them. 
Right. I I I don't I I understand why sometimes people get very sensitive of the Godfather. Sure, I right. understand it. I understand how people get upset when they say, "Well, you know, the music industry is controlled by the Jewish." I understand it ain't right, but I understand it. But they fight back, and we need to fight back. And they're going to continue to do the rub the campaigns and say things about us because why? But we just sit there and go, hmm. That's why I think it's very important that we have to define our image. Now, who's going to counter Dr. Oz? The only people who's going to counter it is you and I. That's right. All the news people ain't going to cover it because that was no. yesterday's news. So you'll have that person who saw that commercial. And even if they take it off today, what damage has it done for the last two weeks? So before we get to the governor real quickly here, I would say that you need to look at who has your best interest. What else do you want to say about Dr. Oz and Featherman? Well, I think that, you know, it's going to be kind of close. I mean, some of the polls we've seen recently have... Uh, uh, Fetterman up by about 15 points, but it's really, I think it's come down to about seven. But um, it, it, it really, the really the race is now started, you know, in September and October and in the first week of November. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what comes out of uh, both campaigns, how they how they try to run, how they try to run the campaigns. Um, but I mean, it's basically been John Fetterman said, you know, that Dr. Oz is not from Pennsylvania. And now I understand that Dr. Oz is asking uh, Fetterman to come out and debate him. So it'll be interesting. Well, I'm going to leave you with this one. If we let Dr. Oz, ladies and gentlemen, don't be crying. So those of you, Roby Wade, don't be crying. Those of you in the LBT community, if they change the law, don't be crying. Because if we don't vote our best interest, then shame on us. Right. Well, and, as we, hmm? and as well, you know, if you care about people being from Pennsylvania to represent us, you, you shouldn't vote for Dr. Oz because he's not from Pennsylvania. That's just a fact. Well, let's go to the next one. We'll be moving fast here tonight. Now we're going to talk about the governor's race in Pennsylvania. And you got two people that are very different, ladies and gentlemen. Two people. Yes, they different. are. Um, so what do you uh, see in the two candidates that we have running for governor of Pennsylvania? Well, there, there's a stark choice you have. You have uh, Doug Mastriano, who has said, you know, on day one, he'll overturn... Uh, the elections and day one he'll get rid of uh, choice in Roe v. Wade and then on uh, the other side you have uh, uh, Attorney General Josh Shapiro who's supporting abortion rights is supporting uh, voting rights uh, supporting those issues so it's, it's a stark choice you have a choice of how you're going to go one way or the other so it's back to your vested interest right so also, I think it's too interesting that the two people that they voted, they, they have uh, running with them for lieutenant governor. Uh, Josh Shapiro is running with Austin Davis, who's from the Pittsburgh area. And uh, uh, Bastiano has a woman, I understand, who is the one who beat Frank Dunready, who's in her second term uh, from, from Western Pennsylvania as well. So that's interesting as well. Um, now... Folks, let's 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 talk about these two candidates. Governor's gonna be very important because because Republicans then already no, they've been working all along to voter ID, redistricting, and making things very tough. So if you sit on your laurels and it happens, don't be crying. Because it's obvious it, it, it it's a no-brainer, it's a strike different. Uh you know, Marciana pretty well said, I'm hard right. Yes, he has. I don't care. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now he 
is in Pennsylvania. And he took a little picture you know, not long ago, way, way, way back with the Confederate uniform on. Now, mm -hmm. before you say, well, he was just, no. He did what he thought was right. And we need to understand that. We need to understand what he stands for. And he doesn't stand for our interests. You can't justify him standing for our interests. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would agree. I mean, it's very clear he is uh, far right. As, as you say, he has said that's where he's coming from. So I would agree wholeheartedly, not in our interests. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring out tonight, and I want your honest opinion on it, is that I have toyed with this whole Democratic, Republican institutions in terms of what we stand for, what we don't stand for. I think it's becoming very prevalent in America that somewhere down the road, we're going to have to make a decision, a choice on principle or a position. Mm. What do you think about that? And I want you to be very honest and tell me what you think about it and why I'm asking that question because I have, I know people on the R side, I know people on the D side, and I haven't always agreed with everybody on the D side. I haven't agreed with everybody on the right R side. And I'm now realizing that we are losing principle. We are yeah. losing what we really stand for and believe. How can you have every Republican vote no for drug prescription? How can you vote against whatever Obamacare in terms of how can you vote for things that can help your neighborhood out or your community out on a principle because the Republican Party or the Democratic Party told you not to be for it? So therefore, you don't necessarily vote necessarily your constituents, but you voted for a party. So how can we change that? Because I am so disappointed in many of my friends. If I want to call them my friends, and they'll say I'm for Donald Trump. And I'll, they'll tell me five reasons why they're for Donald Trump. And I'll say, but he represents this. But it always comes back to the party. So when do people start to have guts? When do people start to, and I look at people like the Cheney lady who believed what was right and what is wrong. And she lost for what she believed that was right. And the other issue is, and I'm giving you a lot to talk about because I'm gonna have you finish up this program, is what do you tell young people? What do you tell young people? You don't want them to know about history because you're afraid they can't handle the yesteryear. So you painted a brush on it, but later on they're gonna find out that you misled them and you did not give them credit to deal with the real issues of life. So what would you tell my audience on the things? And I know I gave you a lot here. Well, I think number one, in terms of the young people that you referenced, I think they have to get involved. I mean, uh, the days of the uh, boom, baby boomers and even the Gen Xs now, we're over 50, most of us, we're getting older. So when you look at the demographics, it's the younger people. 
we're becoming a majority in the country and they have to get they have to speak out and they have to get involved. I think that it's coming out uh, already in some of the re recent election results. I think what you said in general about what do we do? I think we have to, we have to vote with principle. So if you don't, you want to vote with Republicans, no matter what, that's fine. You'll be voted out. You want to vote for Democrats, no matter what, we'll vote you out. I think we have to vote, but to be very discerning in using our vote. I think that's the thing that we haven't been. And I think that's what it should be. Okay. Would you say that since we believe and we talk about America being quote unquote a Christian country, then we need to start looking at real principles of who we are and what we want to articulate for America to be? Well, I think that, I think you, you raised a good point there, Richard, because that, that really is really the crux of the matter. When some of these, some of these people and some of the, some of the people who are running, because people will say it's a Christian country, and some people will say that we are multi uh, diverse communities of, of faith. So it's not that we believe in every, anybody can be whatever they want to be. So we have to decide what, what do we want to be and follow through on that. So, so if you're Jewish, then that's fine. If you're uh, Hindu or Muslim, that's fine. If you're Christian, that's fine. Or, you know, are we going to be a one party, one religious state? And I think that's a big issue that I think that uh, I won't say Democrats. I'll say that people who really care about the country need to talk about. Because I think when you talk about we're a Christian country, I think that was, that that forces the, the issue a bit. I only bring that up because I believe that politicians should be passionate, caring of all people. And sometimes I think we do a lot of talking but principles, they don't add up. And I'm, my point is that I think politics should not be mean-spirited. But at the same time, I think that if we're going to survive, <laughs> unfortunately, I think we may have to be mean-spirited now to make mm -hmm. sure that our interest is there. And that's why I, you know, until November 8th, you know, you, you and I are going to be coming on because, and the reason I have you and I is because who else is going to tell our story the way we want it or say what we want to say. And, and Richard, I want to thank you so much for this, for doing this program, because it's important that we do tell our story. So thank you very much. This is a very important program that you're bringing to the audience. But I think that other people ought to get some broadcasts and we ought to get some uh, TV stations, some radio stations, we ought to get some uh, magazines and papers and, and paint our own picture. But at the same time, we got to support one another. Yes. Because, it, it, you know, we, we do a lot of talking, but we don't, we don't put up. <laughs> not a lot of acting. A lot of talking, not, not a lot of acting. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know we went here and we went there, but I think tonight you got some pretty good thought process. Because I, I, I'm not trying to define anyone listening to this process. The process is for you, you to go out and just think about it. Just go, oh. So I'm telling you, I get tired of hearing about, please don't do this, then become police. I get tired of hearing about kids can't read and write, so you teach them to read and write. Right. I get tired of them saying, this ain't fair, that ain't fair. And I will leave you with this and then I'm gonna have Tony say the final word. Sorry, life ain't fair. Sorry. <laughs> Tony, you have anything to say before we leave? I think in your words, Richard, we have to get involved. So whatever you do, vote, campaign for someone, 
uh, do whatever you can do to get involved because I think uh, we're a better country when more people are to participate. Well, thank you. And I'm going to leave with let's get ready to rumble November 8th, 2022. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and looking forward to seeing you in two weeks. And we're going to keep the fire burning. Ain't no mom. Welcome to Did You Know Podcast, your host, Richard Bowers, dedicated to the African-American the program is aimed to celebrate African American culture and deal with the real and relevant topics that impact the everyday lives of the African American community. Through frank and insightful dialogue with local and national leaders, every day there's another horrible, discouraging news story, directly or indirectly, impacting African Americans. But we need to look at the shining stars in the galaxy of Black America. It is time to tell our story.